Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're checking out Final Fantasy 15 CPU performance using the new standalone benchmark which has been released ahead of next month's PC launch. I asked if you guys wanted a benchmark of the game with 30 plus GPUs and of the almost 5,000 people that voted, 60% of you were very keen on the idea. That being the case, I decided to get on with the benchmarking but before things really got rolling, I actually ended up changing gears and decided to do CPU testing first rather than the GPU testing as it just looked a bit more interesting. I still do plan to conduct extensive GPU benchmarks later in the week though. The reason I wanted to look at CPU performance first is because the game is extremely CPU intensive, far more so than I was expecting. Developer Square Enix recommends gamers pack at least a Core i7-3770 or an FX8350. Typically I'd say that's significantly more firepower from Intel, but whatever, we'll look into that shortly. The point here being that the game calls for 8 threaded CPUs for the recommended specs, while on the GPU front, they believe you'll get away with a GTX 760 or an R9 280. Oddly, in that comparison, AMD packs far more firepower, but then this is an Nvidia sponsored title with Gameworks baked in. According to NVIDIA, the game features integrated NVIDIA Flow, NVIDIA Hairworks, NVIDIA Hybrid for System Trace Shadows, NVIDIA Turf Effects, and NVIDIA Voxel Ambient Occlusion. As I understand it, these game work features are only enabled with the high quality presets, although the CPU testing has been carried out using a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, I've also tested with the standard and light quality presets as well. The standalone benchmark runs for over 5 minutes and covers several events, maps and characters used in the game. For our test though, we are reporting frame rates across a 90 second piece of that benchmark and all results are based on an average of 3 runs. The test begins at the start of the car journey and then ends shortly after everyone gets out of the car to begin their chicken ride as you do. Please note, I found the frame rates were often negatively impacted when fading in and out between scenes, so I avoided testing across those. As always, any auto overclocking functions in the BIOS were disabled, and lock CPUs were paired with the appropriate memory. For example, the Core i3-8100 was tested with DDR4-2400 memory. The unlocked processors were tested with DDR4-3200 memory, and this was also true for the AMD Ryzen CPUs. Again, the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti was used for all testing with the latest drivers, so let's get into the results. Starting things off, we have the higher quality results at 1080p, and for those wondering, this is the maximum quality preset, which has all the GameWorks features enabled. Here the GTX 1080 Ti created a system bottleneck with an average of 91 FPS, so quite shocking to see such a high-end GPU limited to less than 100 FPS at this relatively low resolution. For this graph, let's focus on the average frame rates before sorting the data by the frame time results. Here we see that the Ryzen processors all perform very well in relation to the Intel 8th Gen CPUs, though Intel is being limited by the GTX 1080 Ti here. Even the much older Core i7-2600K and FX8350 look quite good, though the A12-9800 falls into a heap here and really isn't able to deliver playable performance. Sorting the data from the 1% low frame time results, we see that the 8700K is 23% faster than the Ryzen 7 1800X and Ryzen 5 1600X. The 1800X is roughly on par with the Sandy Bridge 2600K and quite shockingly the FX 8350. That said, we see reasonable performance across the entire field with the exception of the A12 9800. Then if we focus on the 0.1% data, the older 2600K and FX8350 processors fall away, as do the more modern quad-core processors such as the Ryzen 3 1300X and Core i3-8100, though the higher clocked 8350K still does quite well. Since we were so heavily limited at 1080p with the GTX 1080 Ti, at least for the high and 8th gen core processors, I decided to try the 720p resolution. Here the 8700K was now 11% faster than the 1800X for the average frame rate, though the 1% low data was much the same despite pulling away by an 18% margin for the 0.1% low result. Okay, so there's the high quality results and for the most part things looked pretty good. There was the occasional frame stutter here and there, but that was smoothed out due to the three run average. So potentially a little bit misleading there, but I'll wait to get into that till we actually have the game. Unfortunately, that frame stuttering that I'm talking of, that was seen even with a Core i7-8700K and GTX 1080 Ti. So there's probably still some optimization work to be done even on Nvidia's behalf. That said though, if we disable the GameWorks features using the standard quality preset, at least that's what I believe we're doing, uh, the performance smoothed out quite considerably and we saw a few other interesting things as well. So let's move on and take a look at those results. 
Here are the standard quality results at 1080p and right away we are seeing more consistent performance, with perhaps the exception of the older 2600K and FX8350 processors. However, looking at the 8700K and the 1800X, we now see a much smaller difference in performance. The 8700K is now just 12% faster when comparing the 0.1% results, whereas previously it was almost 30% faster. The variation in the average frame rate and 1% low result is also far less significant. In fact, Ryzen looks very impressive using the standard quality settings as the Ryzen 5 1400 delivers much more consistent performance when compared to, say, the Core i3 8100, for example. If we sort the graph by the 1% low results, we see just how close it is between the top six processors, which includes the Ryzen 7 1800X along with the Ryzen 5 1600X and 1500X. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 3 1200 is comparable to the Core i3 8350K and Core i7 2600K, which is a solid result. The FX8350 also does surprisingly well as it does manage to get amongst that bunch. Now I thought while I was at it, why not invest the time to check out the light quality preset, and this led to some very interesting findings. Normally Intel's higher clock CPUs run away with the low resolution, low quality testing as they provide much higher maximum frame rates, and we do see that here when looking at the average frame rates. The 8th gen Core i5 and Core i7 processors were able to max out the GTX 1082 at 171 FPS on average, making them at least 11% faster than the Ryzen 7 1800X. However, you might have noticed something strange when looking at the frame time data, so let's move on to focus on that. Here we see something very unexpected. When sorting the data by the 1% low result, the Ryzen CPUs come out on top. In fact, even the Ryzen 3 1300X is able to beat the Core i7 8700K. That's not the case for the 0.1% result, but here the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 CPUs still beat the mighty Core i7 8700K. This is very unusual and we'll have to do a bit more digging to work out what's going on here. Well, there was certainly some interesting results there, and it should give you a good idea of the processing power you'll require to play Final Fantasy XV next month, assuming nothing changes between now and when the game is released next month. Uh, you'd have to assume, though, that the benchmark tool is very accurate, given that the developer has released it ahead of time to allow gamers to prepare their systems. Based on my testing, if you have a quad core that's clocked below 4GHz, you're probably going to struggle with anything more than the light quality settings. The game is extremely CPU intensive. For example, the 12 threaded 8700K rarely dipped below 40% utilization, and in our own test spent most of its time hovering over 50%, at times hitting as high as 80%. It was a similar story for the Ryzen 7 1800X though, more time was spent hovering around 30-40%. Still, the lower end Ryzen CPUs featuring 12 or less threads were very heavily utilized. I should note that the 1600X and 1800X were 5 to 10% faster with SMT disabled, depending on the test, but I haven't shown any of those results and I didn't go too in depth with the testing as I doubt many of you are going to disable SMT just to gain a bit of extra performance in Final Fantasy XV, but at least note that if you wanted to, you could. The high quality settings which we believe enable all the GameWorks features were a bit concerning. Stuttering was certainly an issue here even with the most extreme hardware configurations, so some optimization work still needs to be done. On that note, AMD says they aren't going to release their optimized driver until next month when the game is officially released. That said, I'll likely still do some preliminary GPU testing shortly. Obviously I am really keen to test the game in a bit more depth once it is fully released and Hopefully we'll get a great deal of settings that can be tuned and tweaked for better results. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the CPU performance preview and stay tuned for more content. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.